Hi, I'm Aid. Welcome to my studio. I want to try something different today. I posted 30 second clips on Instagram showing behind the scenes how I make some of my art, but I haven't really taken the time to give a full demonstration. This is the first in what might be a series where I give you a little bit more in-depth look at how I'm doing what I'm doing. Here in front of me, this is what I'm gonna to try to make. Something, something like this. Let me just break down how I'm doing this. The magic is these labels. They're four by six UPS shipping labels. And you can get these on, on Amazon. You can tell the ones I got from UPS have a, a logo on the back, but you know, if you get it from Amazon, it, it, it might have different branding. And what I found is different types of shipping labels have different results. So you might might want to experiment with that. I actually like the UPS ones better than at least at least the uh, generic ones I got from Amazon. Okay, so, so what makes this shipping label special? A lot of people don't realize that when a shipping label is printed, the ink isn't applied on top of the paper. It's actually a thermal paper, a heat sensitive paper. Printer, to get the image, it has a printer head that actually is heating up hot enough that it changes the chemicals in the paper to turn it black. What I've learned through trial and error is there's there's different ways other than heat to pull that ink out of the paper. And the one of the methods I'm going to show you today is using acetone. In other words, nail polish remover. If you've never worked with acetone before, yeah, it's got a very strong smell. And it's also, uh, it, it's a chemical. So you, you, you want to be careful. I guess I should put a disclaimer in here. Anytime you're working with chemicals and um, experimental art like this, you, you want to uh, read the labels on these chemicals and uh, just be careful. You know, you can see this is a uh, maximum strength, 100% pure acetone. This, this one I'm going to be testing with tonight has a, a green tone to it that green will actually evaporate. Yeah, you can see on the back, extremely flammable, keep away from children. So be careful if you're gonna, if you're gonna do an experiment like this. The other thing about acetone, it actually is damaging to plastic. You can see in my bottle here, it's kind of warped. It, 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 it's, it's warping this plastic. And even when I've applied it to my little plastic holder over here, it, it eats away at plastic. So. Um, if you're going to store it in plastic bottles, just know that it, it's going to destroy this bottle at some point. So I've got a stack of labels, and I'm just going to one at a time apply a wash of acetone onto these labels. Open the bottle. I've got a one-inch watercolor brush, but you know it doesn't have to be a nice brush. You could use I've used uh, foam brushes. I've used um, just just experiment with how you get this on the label. So. Um, I've got a little tool that I use to suck the, the acetone out. Oh, great. I just spilled on myself. Nice. Um, okay, this stuff evaporates really fast. So even though I got it on my hand there, I mean, it, it's already dried. So you kind of got to work fast. So I'm going to get, get some on my brush. And I'm just going to you know, kind of... This is not... A precise thing. Um, part of what I like about it is just the randomness. Sometimes you get great results, sometimes you don't. This chemical process will take a little while to complete. You could probably notice there how it's changed just in the last, you know, uh, 10 seconds or so. And it will continue to change, I don't know, uh, for minutes, maybe maybe longer. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set this one to the side and do another one, I guess. You can see you can see how quickly it evaporated, right? As it was evaporating towards the edge and uh, the process, like there wasn't much left in my brush. So um, this next time, I'm going to try to get a little bit more acetone and a little bit heavier application. So again, load my brush up. Start towards the outer edge and work in for this one. Okay. And you, you end up getting this really rich gray tone. 
And we'll come back and look at this one a little later, see how it changes. But I mean, just notice, uh, you're just full of texture. Really love that, uh, that effect. Okay, so I'll set that one aside as well. Those two first ones were UPS labels. So I'm gonna I'm gonna switch to a, a generic label. We'll see if we get a different result. I still have, I think I have enough acetone here on my brush that I can just do another application here. I'll go for more of an oval shape this time. Isn't that isn't that nice? I mean, it's just it's just like magic. And you can tell already that this paper is interacting a little bit differently than um, the other two. Um, it's, it's almost got a blue, blue tint to it, and and actually more stable almost. Uh, not as much variation. Okay, so I'm gonna set that one aside as well, and, and I'm gonna I'm gonna use the generic label again. This time, uh, since my brush is drying out a little bit. I'm gonna see if I can get a little more variation than I did there. Let's try something other than circular. Let's just let's just try some uh, flat brush strokes. The other thing you'll notice about this paper is it it once it's black, it, it's not necessarily permanent. You can you can pull pull it back to white. Watch what happens when I go over this a second time. You know, it's it's gray now. Look at that. It 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 changed it back to white and then goes back to black. I'm still I, I would like a chemical that could like per, I mean, I've tried bleach and, and and other ways to get it to stay to go back to pure white. It's easier to go dark than it is to go light. Um, let me add a couple more passes on this. Well, that's interesting. It's picking up a little bit of the, the brush strokes. Okay, I'm gonna set that one aside. All right, I'm gonna go back to the UPS labels, and I'm just gonna do I'm gonna do a few of these in a row. Eyedropper. Okay. Load my brush up. Uh, I'm just gonna try some. You know, again, I like I like being surprised by what I get here. Um, so you know, every time I make one of these, I try to <clears throat> I never do the same thing twice. Since we're experimenting here, let's. I've got uh, two two labels. A little bit more. I'm gonna make a, a sandwich here. Let's see. So, and then let's close it real quick. <clears throat> I'm gonna leave that closed, and we'll, we'll open it here after it's. Oh, chance to sit. Okay, uh, here's a bonus technique. I'm I'm on a cutting board, and it's been used a lot, so it's got a, a lot of deep cuts in it. So what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply my acetone right onto the to the board, and the cracks of the board are going to absorb the acetone. I'm going to set the label on, and we're going to get a, an interesting texture here, hopefully. So, apply it straight to my board. Hold the label against it. Sort of press it in. And then we'll see what, what we got. You can see it, it picked up some of the blue from the, the board. 
but yeah, you get a real interesting texture pattern there. And I got one more, so let's let's do that same same thing one more time with the with the board. We'll just let that sit there. Let's let's open this one up. Our little sandwich experiment. See what happened. So it did it did transfer a bit. Um, I'm gonna let this air out a little bit. And let's go back and look at what's happened to. Actually, let's let's pull this one up first. Uh, not, not quite as crisp as that first one. We'll let that one sit too. I can't remember exactly what order I did these in. Notice how uh, this one's darkened since the initial pass. I, I'm not real happy with this. It, it um, you know, I like I like the, these areas where it's more broken up. These flat areas. I mean. This is really just the first step in the in the process. Um, at some point later, what I, what I like to do is come back on top of these, add other elements. So here are a couple finished ones. I've, I've used a, a dragonfly on top of these textures. All right, so you know that just because I'm not happy with this doesn't mean it's it's not not a keeper because uh, these things aren't aren't done until they're done. So, you know, I'll figure out a way to make use of, of all these. So, all right, that was our, I think that was our first one. Uh, and then, um, or maybe this was the first one, I can't remember. But uh, you, you notice how I didn't have as much applied here. So we got, it never went completely gray. Maybe maybe we, uh, we work on this one a little bit. Let's, let's just go on top of it again. I need a little more. I'm just going to drip it right on top of this this time. All right. So let's let's set that one aside again. All right. Some. It, it it definitely doesn't pick up the the brush strokes like like paint would. Um, you don't have that kind of control, which you know you may or may not like, depending on what you're going for. So there's there's those two, and then these were the the generic labels. You can see where I, I don't like them as much as the as the UPS ones. I don't, I don't know how they're necessarily different, but you you get a very different. You just don't get the the richness. So and then here are ones with with the cutting board texture. This pattern changes depending on how long, how much acetone you actually apply, how long it's in contact. I, I think there's an, an element about how, how much oxygen is is in the mix when it's covered up. I, I haven't quite figured out that variable. But. And then, yeah, here's the one where we just added another layer to that. That's pretty much what I wanted to show you. Like I said, we're, we're working with acetone here, but I've done a lot with with alcohol-based chemicals. So isopropyl alcohol, denatured alcohol. You have to be, be careful with those just for, for the fumes, highly flammable nature of it. So if, if you want to be safe, use something like hand sanitizer that I don't know what percentage of hand sanitizer alcohol is. You know, but it's it's 50% maybe 60%. It's enough to get a chemical reaction. So that's that's a perhaps better way to go. Uh, what other chemicals have I tested? Uh, Rain-X. Maybe I'll, I'll do a demo of Rain-X at one point. Scotch. You can use, uh, I've never tried like rum or anything, but alcoholic beverages, if it has a strong enough alcohol content, will we'll have a chemical reaction. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, give me a like, follow me and all that, and um, maybe I'll make some more of these. Thank you.